The Lord, our Redeemer, be with you. And also with you. This is Holy Week, and normally in our churches we have services day by day, but we're still living in lockdown, so our services this Holy Week are coming from the Sea House Chapel here in Kilmore. You're very welcome, and I do pray that you will join in these services on a daily basis and be blessed by them. Let us pray. God of our days and years, we set aside this time for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, that as we walk with him in the shadow of death, on the way of the cross, that we might know him and the power of of his risen life in us. Amen. Today our reading from Mark's Gospel will be read by Laura McCauley. This is a reading from Mark, chapter 11, verse 27 to 33. They arrived again in Jerusalem, and while Jesus was walking in the temple courts, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you authority to do this? Jesus replied, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, was it from heaven or of human origin? Tell me. They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, and why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, they feared the people forever in hell that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. Jesus said, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we turn to God's word, let us pray. Speak, Lord, in the stillness as we wait upon thee. Hush our hearts to listen with expectancy for Christ's sake. Amen. Romanticism in the mid-19th century saw the flowering of a movement in the arts in literature and music and even in church life, which brought imagination back into focus after the bare realism and of rationalism of the Enlightenment, the previous century, in the 1800s. One of the most prominent artists of the Romantic movement was Holman Hunt, who drew on religious themes for his work. In 1870, Hunt visited the Holy Land and went to Jerusalem. And on his return, a number of his paintings reflected his visit, including the shadow of death that you can see now. It is a pose of Jesus Christ who stretches in the carpenter's workshop after a day's labor. It foreshadows his death, because there is a shadow of the cross that his mother Mary looks at in wonder. In this Holy Week, we want to explore the shadow of death according to Mark's Gospel. The death of Jesus dominates Mark's Gospel. The last week of Jesus' life takes up a third of the Gospel. Indeed, the death of Jesus broods over the entire Gospel of Mark. Mark's Jesus is the Jesus of the cross. Let's turn to that reading that Laura read for us some moments ago in chapter 11 in Mark, and focusing on verses 27 and 33. Jesus and his disciples had joined the throng of Jewish pilgrims for the Passover festival. They were in Jerusalem. And on day one of their visit to Jerusalem, Jesus had visited the temple. And he had looked around and saw what is going on. The following day, he had gone into the temple and he had caused a disturbance by turning over the tables of the money changers 
and those selling wares in this place, the sacred place. He said, this is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Now, the religious establishment, the religious elite who controlled the temple were furious with Jesus. And so the next day when Jesus revisits the temple, the scene of the crime, they clash with him and they ask him, they demand of him, by what authority have you done this? Jesus recognises that it's a, a trap. And so he turns the tables on them, as he often does with his opponents. And he asks them a question. The baptism of John, was it from God or was it from man? The religious elite are put on the back foot. They huddle together and there is a heated discussion. Mark allows us in to their debate. If they say that John's baptism was from God, well, then Jesus would ask, well, why didn't you believe him? Why didn't you listen to him? Why weren't you baptized by him? Whereas if they said, well, John's baptism was a solo run. He was doing it on his own bat. Well, then they would face the opposition of the populace who held John to be a hero. And remember, John, by this time, had been executed brutally by King Herod. They're on what we would call the horns of a dilemma. And after this period of heated discussion, they simply answered Jesus with, we don't know, in verse 33. These religious leaders claimed ignorance. They were agnostic about John. They were unable to detect and incapable to discern spiritual matters because John had raised a spiritual awakening in Israel at the time. And these people were on the outside of that spiritual awakening. Their refusal to answer Jesus exposed them for what they really were, fraudulent hypocrites. And we'll see more about that this week. And so Jesus answered them, if that is the case, that you're not prepared to answer me, then I am not prepared to give you an answer. To the initial question. Now this isn't just tit for tat. This is not a game that is being played, a cat and mouse, because in the rest of this chapter we will find Jesus clashing with these religious authorities, the religious establishment, time and time again. Mark outlines this in his controversy sequence of six clashes. There's going to be a showdown between the religious elite and Jesus. By what authority? That was the substance of their question to Jesus. By what authority? And that's still a critical question for our times, isn't it? By what authority, for example, do governments restrict our lives, our freedom? A movement in this almost perpetual lockdown caused by the coronavirus. By what authority do I have to be vaccinated against COVID-19? By what authority do I live my life? For most of us, in answer to that question, we would say, well, we're answerable to no one except ourselves. I live life my way. 
according to my own light and understanding. But when it comes to Jesus and his claims, what authority has he over us? According to Mark and the rest of the biblical writers, Jesus Christ is Lord with all authority in the universe. And moreover, we who are dependent upon him, for we were made and fashioned by him, we owe him. And we will be called to give an account of our lives, however we have led them, in front of him. And yet, do we really recognize who he is? And do we know and accept that the authority he has in the universe and the authority that he has in your life and my life? Like the religious leaders of his day that we have looked at in this chapter of Mark, Many of us say we don't know. We're agnostic about Jesus. It could go either way. But in truth, ignorance is not really an option. It's an excuse when it comes to Jesus. As it was then, as it is now. And the truth is, it exposes who we really are and who we really belong to. We're going to sing hymn 240, a hymn written by a man from Galinchy in County Don, Walter Shirley. Sweet the moments, rich in blessing. <laughs> closing, we turn to prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge you to be Lord of all and we bow in your presence and long for your just and gentle rule to come on earth. Save us from hypocrisy. Keep us from ignorance. Protect us from anarchy. Help us to do right by you. 
to live generously and to walk in the way of the cross humbly before you. Amen. And so may the Father who loved the world so much that he gave his only Son bring you by faith into his eternal kingdom.